Bikini had been evacuated since 1946, when this atoll became ground zero for many of the 67 U.S. nuclear explosions in the Pacific. Bombs like the 1954 Bravo blast created huge craters and sprayed radiation more than 100 miles away. Despite cancer, thyroid, and other health problems in Rongelap, the American government returned Bikinians to their island in the 1970s after a cleanup. Now, at long last, these people will be returned to their homes and the uh, village will be rebuilt for them and uh, new uh, coconut and pandanus trees are being planted. They should have a very fine village and good life on the island when they return. In this film taken at the time, Dr. Kennard assured that it was safe to return to Bikini, just as he once said about Rongola. The radiation levels on Bikini are so very slight and so many precautions taken to reduce the levels to extremely low amounts that there should not be any real hazard when these people are returned. We know from our experiences on Ranjalab that the low levels of radiation there that persisted in the soil after the fallout were insufficient to cause any hazard to the Ranjalab people and so I wouldn't expect that there would be any, uh, any hazard here. As soon as they heard Bikini was, in theory, safe to go back to again, they said, we're, we're on the next boat. We want to go back. After several Bikini families returned, Brookhaven discovered plutonium and other radioactive potential cancer causers in their urine samples. Yet no one in the U.S. government informed them of this danger. Dr. Conrad Kajrati was then a young physician hired by Brookhaven to deal with the health problems of the Marshallese. He remembers how the Bikinians were told not to worry about the radiation. I think I remember that there was um, a discussion about um, the issues about plutonium in the urine and the cesium. And I really questioned why they wouldn't disclose that information. Um, and if I remember correctly, they, they basically said they didn't feel it was important to disclose. After spending more than a year in the Marshalls, Kudrati let his bosses back on Long Island know that the people of Ronglap and neighboring Utrecht no longer believe their safety claims. The distrust the people have for Dr. Kennard developed because of the inconsistency when he stresses no problem exists, then at a later time an actual health problem arises. It's not hard to understand the people's point of view if you can drop all your American ideas and biases about medicine and try to see things through the eyes of someone living on a relatively isolated, primitive outer island. Their blood is taken, they are measured, and at times subjected to body scans. In the end, people say they are sent on their way with little or no explanation or medicine despite many complaints. Now, if an American was to go through this process each year for 20 years, would he also not consider himself a research subject, a type of guinea pig, if you will? In 1978, 10 years after they said it was okay to return to Bikini, Brookhaven and U.S. officials reversed themselves. Now, Bikinians were told they must all leave their homeland because radioactive levels in the ground were still too high. The people of Ronglap watched what happened on Bikini with great alarm. They concluded they couldn't stay on their island and decided to do something about it.